there's a stock out there that I'm not hearing anyone talk about and I want to talk about it today because I think it's massively important and I think that there's a ton of potential upside in this stock. I'm a little bit confused on why things are not getting crazy right now, why there's not a lot of hubbub. So what I want to talk about today is Ford and why no one's talking about it and what is the potential upside for Ford? Can we compare it to Tesla? Are they gonna be a competitor of Tesla? Could this hurt Tesla? Could it hurt Ford? I wanna get all your thoughts, but we're gonna dive into it because they just had, Ford just had a big reveal of its Lightning. And I wanna get into this. This is their all electric F-150 that they're calling the Lightning. They had a big reveal the other day. And since the reveal, just what they said about within the last 24 to 36 hours, they've had 20,000 pre-orders for the all-electric F-150, which is called the Lightning. Now, the Ford F-150, if you don't know much about it, it's America's best-selling vehicle, best-selling truck. It has been for a while. It's used for work, it's used for recreation, it's work used just for transit in general. Everyone owns an F-150, and now they're going all-electric. So I wanna break this down a little bit for you, and I wanna hear your thoughts, so drop me a comment below if you think they are competitive with Tesla or if you think this is just wild speculation and, and overall, you know, like garbage. So let's just dive into some stuff. So what I'm finding on Ford is that they've taken those 20,000 reservations for its new electric F-150 Lightning pickup truck in less than 12 hours after the truck was officially unveiled. So you've got that happening. And CEO Jim Farley says that the F-150 pickup truck Lightning it's gonna be a test as to whether the mainstream America really truly wants electric vehicles. My opinion on this is absolutely, because I think if, if you haven't driven an electric vehicle, the thing that you might not understand is that it has instantaneous horsepower. The torque is off the charts. The power, the power in and of itself is, is mind boggling. So if that comes packaged to beat a combustion engine, and then on top of it, you're not buying gas and you do have decent range. Range tends to be an issue. Building an electric car that only gets 100 miles in range is not good if you're going to be in a rural area or you're going to be moving around a lot. You have to have the infrastructure in place to charge and you have to have the mileage just to get between point A and point B. So this lightning pickup truck that they revealed, that they revealed the other night, it has a base model with 230 miles and it starts at about 39,974, we'll call it 40K. And then they have another one that's gonna start in the mid 50,000s, and it can go upwards of about 300 miles. Now, clearly this is affected by weather and affected by load that you might be towing. But this puts it right on par with similarly priced Tesla Cybertruck, and then far below the luxury-minded options like the Rivian R1T or General Motors GMC Hummer pickup that they've recently been coming out with and, and, and gaining hype behind. Now, as always, these Ford pickups are going to be eligible for the full $7,500 federal tax credit, which eventually they'll phase out over time. And like most EV makers, they're taking their reservations for the Lightning pickup truck starting at like $100. So you can pay $100, reserve it, much like you could do for the Tesla Cybertruck when they had their reveal, they took pre-orders. $100 fully refundable. Now the reason I got excited about this was um, I've been a buyer of Ford for a while and I've been building a position in it and as EVs have evolved and I've listened to what Ford is saying, um, you know, in the beginning I had this thought that maybe Tesla would buy Ford, but then as I heard Ford being a family owned business and they I, pushing back on that, I thought, you know, that's not a realistic outlook for it. So. As I've been watching Ford and what they're doing, they've just sort of been quietly in the background building and innovating. And as many of you probably know, they've come out with the Mach-E, which is their latest EV, and they've been selling like crazy. So I actually saw one downtown where I lived the other day, and it's a very sharp looking vehicle. And if it can get 200 miles, you know, it's a really interesting, or 230 miles, it's a super interesting play. And I'm gonna look it up real quick because I can't remember. Um, let me look up the Mach-E range, and let's just see real quick, because I don't wanna give you something that's not right. It says right now that they're 210 to 300 mile battery only. So 210 to 300 is what they're saying, the Ford Mustang Mach-E, 
um, will allow for. But very, very exciting. And the other night, I found it very funny and, and kind of cool, though, that Joe Biden visited the Ford All Electric plant in Dearborn, Michigan. And he gave a little speech and was talking. And I thought, oh, this is very positive press for Ford. And then he goes out into their test facility and he's actually driving a Ford F-150 all electric, the Lightning. And he's he's hammering it and you can see him ripping across this test area. And I thought for sure that was going to send Ford stock higher the next day. And it did ultimately, but it was a little more quiet. And that was kind of the impetus for this video. I saw some clear positive signs I'm seeing upgrades, which we'll get into. I'm seeing a lot of innovation. You've got President Biden showing it off and, and tearing around a test facility in it. And it made me wonder why things aren't more hyped than they are, because I thought to myself, if Elon did the same thing with Tesla, if Tesla was in the news like this, it'd be surging. So I found that very interesting. It's almost like the calm before this very positive storm for Ford. So the other thing that stood out was they did get an upgrade. Now, post that right here. Um, on 518, Tudor Pickering, they initiated coverage on them as a buy with a price target of 17. Now, if you look at my chart I have right here on Ford, you can see that, you know, Ford did pop up and hit a high of 1362. And I can back out a little bit. And you can see it's kind of been a, a you know, had a big sell off when we unwound during COVID. And it's just been a gentle, gradual climb up until we got right at the beginning of the year and it got some momentum. This push higher, that was a result, in my opinion, of the talks about the EVs, about the Mach-E Mustang, other innovation that they were looking into. So it became very interesting and apparent to me that Ford might reload here and then go. Now, another very compelling point here, aside from getting initiation by Tudor Pickering and getting a price target set at 17 and getting this upgrade, um, you also get the 422 just a little while ago, Wolf Research upgrade, outperform rating and a 15 target. Wells Fargo initiated coverage on them. They went overweight at a 15 price target. So things have been happening in April and early May. Things are all pointing to positive roads ahead for Ford. And then you get this. Ford decides to talk with South Korean battery maker SK Innovation and they're set to potentially launch a battery joint venture in the United States to support the ramp up of Ford's electric vehicle rollout. So here's what's really interesting about this. Ford's not saying we're going to build these vehicles, we're going to go get our batteries, we're going to source this, we're going to source that. They actually want to take the battery building in-house. They want to create this joint venture with SK. They want to build the batteries that they put in their vehicles, which would allow for easy swapping out if there's issues, potential repairs if needed, um, probably covered under any warranty that they're going to have. So it gets really, really interesting because then that's going to bring the price down. So ultimately what this is going to come down to is you put Ford against Tesla. If they're both in the same neighborhood in terms of mileage and they're both in the same neighborhood in terms of price point, what's going to push you over? Well, there could be a potential that if they take all their battery production in house and they do that, could they edge out Tesla by just like a tiny bit? I don't know, but if they did, that could be super interesting. They could come in under Tesla, but perform as well or better than a Tesla Cybertruck. And to be completely honest, I, the Tesla Cybertruck is, is pretty awesome. It's the lines on it are crazy, but I would guess that seven out of 10 people want a pickup truck that looks like a pickup truck. People are buying pickup trucks. They have been forever. They've always kind of looked the same. They innovate on body design a little bit, but generally pickup trucks look like pickup trucks. And this Lightning pickup truck, as you can see in these photos, it's gonna be like a pickup truck. So that could also be another advantage they have over Tesla until Tesla revamps and redesigns the Cybertruck, which I, my opinion is that they will put out a Cybertruck and then they'll put out another version where they soften the edges and sort of like cater to people who want just typical trucks. Some people don't want to stand out like that with the spaceship looking truck. So if they have a softer version, that could bolster sales and help them compete with Ford. But right now, Ford's going to put out a very good performing, very well priced point pickup truck that looks like a pickup truck. Now, something else. 
Let's get into um, another interesting point about Joe Biden being there. So Biden's going to pledge his support to build out 500,000 charging stations and bolster the battery production supply chain. So Ford's part, so it says that Ford's primed to benefit from any government investment in the nation's EV infrastructure. And then on Wednesday, they made their boldest statement yet as being part of a $22 billion electric vehicle investment plan through 2025. So with this electric F-150 being revealed on Wednesday evening and looking like a truck and having a good price and having decent range, we're moving on into, okay, do I buy this stock? Do I keep buying this stock? As I told you, I've been buying this stock over the last few years, and now it gets kind of interesting when you look at this. This right here is Tesla's PE ratio. Now, I'm not necessarily a fundamentals guy all the time, but I do like to be aware of how is a stock trading? What's its price relative to its sales? What's its price relative to its earnings? So if you come in here, you can see that the PE on Tesla is 568. That's really high. And I understand Tesla is a disruptor. Tesla is a branding genius. They're always in the news. Hype is definitely priced. Forward looking PE is 90. And then price to sales is 15. So let's flip over now. Let's just look at Ford. So if you take Tesla, 568, 90, and 15, and then we head over and we look at Ford. PE on Ford, 12. Ford looking PE, 7.18. And price to sales, 0.36. Ford is a pretty well priced stock right now. It's not crazy. And I think that can really help people say and identify you know what, if I've made money in Tesla, is it time to maybe rotate out of Tesla into Ford, let Tesla breathe and do its thing, and rotate into Ford and get in on the ground level for Ford's next leg higher? Because if I go back here and I look at the monthly chart, let's just look back at the chart for a second. And let's see, so if I look at the monthly chart and I zoom way out, you can see there was a day when Ford actually was in the mid 30s, but Ford has spent a lot of time between 18 and about $5. And we're at 12 right now. So we are way off all time highs. We're even a decent amount off of recent highs from last November. So we had this EV push and now we're back, especially on the monthly chart, we're back above the 50 SMA for the monthly. And we're getting this little, little roll over here that could be an amazing buy point for Ford. So I'm going to continue buying Ford. I want to hear what you think about the Ford F-150, about the Lightning. You can also comment and let me know what you think about the Mach-E. Also, I didn't mention, but it's coming out is the E-Transit. And then the Lightning midpoint 2022, you're going to see the Lightning. Ford is going to move to an all-electric fleet and at some point, and I think once people see the power and the performance behind these vehicles, I don't think it's going to be hard to change your mind, especially when you're not pumping gas. So I hope this video was informative. Drop a comment below. If you haven't, grab a membership at Taking Trades on the YouTube channel. Hit the join button. It's just 25 bucks a month and we have a private Slack channel. You'll get private live streams when I live stream. It's just a nice community where we talk about day trading. We talk about long-term investing. We talk about options. We talk about it all. So check that out. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. And if you've got any value out of this video, hit that like button. It really helps the YouTube algorithm. Thanks for stopping by. I'm Jimmy, and we'll see you in the next video.